Recently, we've been getting news of a PC port for the original Red Dead Redemption, which was released back in 2010, and Rockstar made a PS4 and Switch port for this game last August, so it's not entirely unreasonable to assume that a PC port is also on the way. Besides, as I'll show you later in the video, we've got some pretty convincing leaks to support this theory. But today's video isn't about the leaks or what we might see in the eventual PC release later this year. Instead, it's about the core gameplay mechanics and narrative threads that made the original Red Dead Redemption so amazing, and how those same aspects of the game stand up today in a post-RDR2 gaming landscape. Red Dead Redemption was the first mainstream cowboy action game to tackle the taming of the Wild West. We see similar themes in its prequel, but Red Dead Redemption 1 makes it very clear right from the start that the age of the cowboys and mid-noon duels is coming to an end. It doesn't glorify the outlaw life, nor does it make any attempt to portray John Marston as a heroic figure. Mind you, the game still has some cool action sequences in which you rob banks, hijack trains, defend villages from bandit gangs, and even assault a fort with a Gatling gun. But what touched me the most when I first played it was the story, and how each character felt like a real human being, with their own flaws, ambitions, and regrets. The box says Red Dead Redemption, but by the end, you begin to wonder if there's any redemption at all in this cruel world, or if everyone is just stuck in a perpetual cycle of violence. Personally, I believe the narrative of RDR1 mirrors a Greek tragedy, as it explores themes like friendship, betrayal, vengeance, honor, and sacrifice. Because the plot is balanced on such universal concepts, RDR1's story is truly evergreen. It can be enjoyed by audiences of any era, even the modern audiences who are more used to fast-paced action-heavy plots. But with all that said, let's dive deeper and see what made Red Dead Redemption 1 special in an industry full of amazing third-person action shooters, many of which were also cowboy games. Was it the Rockstar name? Or perhaps it was the fact that this game was developed by a team of 1,000 people over 5 years with a massive $100 million budget. I think it's a bit of both here. The Rockstar name and extensive marketing campaigns certainly helped, but the the sheer amount of passion and hard work that went into this project is what helped it withstand the test of time. The original Red Dead Redemption was the single most successful cowboy game ever, and it remained the best-selling game in its genre until 2018 when it was finally surpassed by Red Dead Redemption 2. Gun, Call of Juarez, and Red Dead Revolver were all excellent games and they paved the way for Red Dead Redemption 1, but they could never even dream of achieving this level of critical as well as commercial success. Now let me explain why. Gun had an open world, high noon pistol duels, and an action RPG gameplay loop with side missions and collectibles, but the story was a little bit weak and the world felt empty despite its size, with very few activities and zero character customization. Call of Juarez, on the other hand, had interesting characters and solid first-person gameplay, but you couldn't really roam the Wild West and forge your own path like an open-world action RPG. It was suffocatingly linear and it also had a fairly short story with no replayability whatsoever. Even the mighty Red Dead Revolver had many of the same issues as Call of Juarez. However, Red Dead Redemption got everything right from the get-go. Open world, memorable characters, high production value which meant good voice acting, as well as excellent cutscenes, satisfying gameplay, and loads of activities for you to immerse yourself in the fictional land of New Austin. It combined the best elements of Gun and Call of Juarez into one game, with light sprinkling of Rockstar's magic seasoning, and by magic seasoning, I do mean that soul-crushing crunch that got so bad at one point that the developer's wives supposedly wrote an open letter to Rockstar's management asking them to ease down on the unhealthy working conditions. Thankfully though, all that crunch would ultimately result in a fat paycheck for Rockstar because Red Dead Redemption 1 sold over 5 million copies in its first three weeks and it exceeded Take-Two's expectations by a significant margin. By February of 2017, Red Dead Redemption 1 had shipped over 15 million copies and it was the fifth best-selling game of 2010 and the ninth best-selling game in total on the Xbox 360. I would go so far as to say that the original Red Dead Redemption is better than its sequel in a few ways. While I do love the character of Arthur Morgan and how he's presented as a blank slate for the player to empathize with, Red Dead Redemption 1's more structured narrative does have its benefits here. It allows for tighter pacing and a story with no dull moments in between major action points. Another thing I love about Red Dead Redemption 1 is the physics and how enemies have this extremely visceral reaction to getting shot in different body parts. It reminds me sort of of Left 4 Dead in a way, because the zombies in that game also react very well to being shot, 
and that's also a pretty old game as well at this point. In Red Dead Redemption 1, you can shoot an enemy in both kneecaps, and they'll go into this special kneeling animation, at which point you can walk up and do a special execution move. For some reason, I feel like they toned down the ragdoll effects in Red Dead Redemption 2 a little bit. Similar to how GTA 5's ragdoll physics are more subtle compared to GTA 4, while they are probably more realistic in Red Dead Redemption 2, I do feel like it could have been more fun if they used the old ragdoll model and had more of those elements in the game. And then you've got bounties. Red Dead Redemption 1 has over 40 unique targets, which is three times more than its successor. The original also had this gambling minigame called Liar's Dice, in which each player gets five dice in a cup and they have to guess how many of them show at a certain number after shaking the cup. Every time you get caught bluffing, you lose a dice, and the winner is the one with at least one dice left at the end. This was a fan favorite among players, alongside arm wrestling and horseshoe throwing. RDR1 also had safe houses, which were properties that you could purchase around the map. These safe houses could be used to rest, resupply, and change outfits, and in Red Dead Redemption 2, these have been replaced with camps that contain NPCs and activities, but I'd have liked to see purchasable properties which aren't even a thing in the online game mode right now. Rockstar, I have the cash, so why don't you give me something to spend it on? Alright, I've saved the best part for last. In October of 2010, just five months after the base game released, Rockstar released the single-player DLC for Red Dead Redemption called Undead Nightmare, and it has its own story and unique enemy types. Call of Duty World at War was another AAA game to experiment with a zombie game mode inside of their main game, and it was quite successful, so Rockstar may have thought, hmm, gamers seem to love these random zombie spin-offs in their games. Let's try and put zombies in the Wild West. And the crazy part is, it worked. This Halloween-themed expansion is set in an alternate storyline in which Abigail and Jack get infected, and John is searching for a cure for them. He must liberate nearby settlements from zombie invasions, and he also uses new weapons such as the blunderbuss as well as holy water. You can even summon the four mythical horses of the apocalypse and ride them into battle if you want. In addition to the single-player story, Undead Nightmare also included two multiplayer modes. We have, of course, the infamous Undead Overrun, as well as the normal Land Grab mode. Overrun was a co-op horde mode in the game, very similar in style to Left 4 Dead, which where you team up with three other survivors and you fight off zombies, except this time it was over the course of many waves, so very similar to zombies as well in Call of Duty. Land Grab was an addition to the base game's multiplayer free roam, and it didn't follow any Undead theme, but it was still pretty Pretty fun. The original Red Dead Redemption had one of the most enjoyable multiplayer modes ever, and people still play it nearly 14 years later, which shows you just how well the design has held up. Since there was no ability cards, it was more fair, and there were also these iconic Mexican standoffs at the start of the gang matches, which always got everyone hyped up. You also had an epic announcer guy who'd introduce both sides and set the mood for some Wild West mayhem. RDR1 Online had three modes. We had free roam, competitive PvP, and co-op. I remember spending a ton of time playing PvP modes like Grab the Bag, Hold Your Own, Gun Rush, and Stronghold. Will Rockstar bring back the online mode in its original state to the upcoming port? I doubt it because the PS4 and Switch ports have no online component either, unfortunately. Besides, it's impossible to monetize the original online mode with microtransactions, so I don't see Rockstar or Take-Two bothering with it after all these years, unfortunately. So what we'll probably get is a slightly updated single-player story mode with a 60fps patch for PC, maybe some widescreen support and updated control schemes, and maybe even an unlocked frame rate, but I'm not expecting much from it at this point. Right now, we have really good evidence that Red Dead Redemption 1 is slated to get its PC port though. On May 13th of 2024, a data miner named Tezfun2 has revealed some promotional text that Rockstar created for Red Dead Redemption 1's PC release. It was sourced from the Rockstar Games launcher site itself, where they had recently updated a few strings related to their marketing. And according to this text, not only are we going to get the base game, but also the updated Undead Nightmare DLC. On the official GTA forums website, an admin also admitted that the text was captured from an unrelated launcher script update, claiming it was an oopsie, and that we might get more news in the upcoming investor call announcement. And then, just a few days ago actually, on the 12th of June, there was a database leak on the Epic Game Store, which revealed that the codename for Red Dead Redemption 1's PC port is Selma, and that it's been added to the store's backend, and it was added on the 2nd of February of this year. So not only that, but the download size was also leaked as well, at 9.17 gigabytes, which is smaller than the space it takes up on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, which is 10.5 gigabytes. 
Because of this, I highly doubt we're going to be getting further improved textures from that PS4 and PS5 version. Textures do take up a ton of space at the end of the day, and if that would have been the case, then we would have seen a significant increase in the download size if this PC port had better textures than the PS4 one. At this point, we don't know exactly when the Red Dead Redemption 1 port will be released for PC, but signs point to it being sometime later this year. All signs also point to it being the exact same game as the console version, with a slight FPS bump obviously, and maybe some extra controls and accessibility settings. And even though it's extremely doubtful that Double Eleven Studios as well as Rockstar will mess it up, if somehow they do mess it up, modders will be here to save the day.